أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونصلي على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له شهادة كاملة تنجينا من الكفر والعسيان وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين توفاهم الملائكة الظالمي أنفسهم قالوا فيما كنتم قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجروا فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا صدق الله صدق الله مولانا العظيم We glorify the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We bear witness that there is none who is worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger Brother and sister in Islam through this camera would like to advise you the values of being a very good citizen a good Muslim normally is a good citizen of his country. We do find ourselves in certain countries. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, Verily, as for those whom the angels take in death, while they are wronging themselves, the angels will say to them, In what conditions were you? They reply, we were weak and oppressed on the earth. Angels will say, Was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to immigrate therein? Such a man will find their place in hell. What an evil destination. Here you can see Allah is telling you in Surah An Nisa, Surah 4, verse 97, that for some people, they do find themselves in the weak conditions or oppressed on the earth. And finding yourself here, or your father, or your grandfather, being first or second or third generation, your being here in London is by choice, was not by chance. People keep moving from a place to another. It was only for 200 good Muslims who moved from Hadramaut to go to Indonesia and today we have a powerful Muslim nation in Indonesia. It was only for very few traders who came from South Yemen and Oman to trade at the east coast of Africa and today Islam is in my country, Rwanda. So wherever you find yourself, you have to be part and parcel of that community. Sometimes Muslims are being kicked out from their land. Muslims are being marginalized in their own homes. Muslims sometimes do find themselves in the conditions as the ones we lived in in Rwanda. Muslims arrived in Rwanda in 1894 or 1896. All in all, it will be four or six years before the arrival of Christianity. The first mosque was built in Rwanda in 1913. But because the colonial masters arriving in Africa, they had missionaries, white fathers. Those are the people who kept us in the slums. And for each and every slum, we had a barracks controlling the movement of Muslims within those camps and slums. By law of 1925, Muslims were denied certain rights, including they had no right to possess a land. Instead, they were given a land on rental basis. And once they are given those lands, then they are not allowed to carry out any type of business on those lands. And if they do, then they are to pay twice as the much a Christian pay on the same business. Now, the Muslims had no right 
for further education after primary education. And again, they had no right to visit or to be visited by anybody without a written permission from the ruler of those slums. So once you are being pushed on the wall but your fellow, by your fellow citizen people, then a Muslim will seem to consider himself as a second-class citizen. So we decided in 1959, at the first pack of genocide, to make sure Muslims are becoming full citizens of that land, at least morally, by protecting those people who were in need. And throughout the history of genocide, because the first test of genocide was 1959, and every two to three to four to ten years, small genocides were taking place. In 1994, also morally, we decided to side with those people who were in need. And after 1994, we said, enough is enough. We have to exercise our rights, since we have a government which is powerful enough to give everybody his rights. We said, now is the beginning of our life in our country. Having a government giving us our rights, we have to be the best citizens of this land. And today, we are enjoying ourselves in our land. As a result, I would like to advise you, brothers and sisters, through this camera, make sure you are children of UK more than anybody else. You defend this country more than anybody else. You look after the infrastructure of this country more than anybody else. As I have said, a good Muslim is a good citizen of his country. There is no way you can be a citizen of the land and then you plan to destroy the same land. If you do, everybody will consider you and your sisters and your brothers as invaders. There is no way you can be part and parcel of the community if there is a no, a total integration in the community. Sometimes a Muslim also might be misguided by the environment, by being kicked right and left, and then you say, I have nothing to do with these Christians. But Quran tells you clearly. In Surah Al-Mumtahina, Surah 60, verse 8, Allah says, Allah does not forbid you to deal justly and kindly with those who fought not against you on account of your religion. Nor drove you out of your homes. Verily, Allah loves those who deal with equity. So here you have so much to do with your fellow countrymen, a Christian or any other faith. You have a right and he has a right over you. Because again, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells you, he is not a believer. Whoever sleeps on a full stomach while his neighbor is on an empty stomach. So as a Muslim, you have to make sure that your neighbor lives as good as you live in your own home. So do not think that since I'm a Muslim and my countryman is not a Muslim, I have nothing to do with him. You have so much to do with your countryman who is a Christian. As long as the same countryman is not there to fight you on account of your faith or drive you out of your homes. So this is the Quran, this is a deen which has made us who we are in our land. This is the Quran which has kept us far away from the strong life of our people in our country, right from 1959. This is the Quran which has protected Muslims of Rwanda uh, and they were able to run away from genocide. Instead, their homes and their mosques were safe heaven for whoever was in need of protection. May Allah protect you. May Allah protect Islam in the UK. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.